Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to Spectacular Game, which is known or maybe not uh, as a Dr. Josef Krejcik Immortal Game. Now, why I am so confused about that? Because according to Wikipedia, uh, Josef Krejcik played that against Johann Berger in 1911 in Karlsbad. Now, the problem about that is in tournament in Karlsbad, Krejcik didn't play in that tournament. He played in the lower rank tournament tournaments in Vienna at that time, so uh, it was not exactly his level, that's the first hint. Another hint is that in 1908 in Wiener Zeitung we have article about this game um, where actually uh, is analysis of this game and indeed we have Josef Krejcik playing as black, this is we know for sure, however the opponent is R. Berger. So that means it's not famous Johann Berger. Johann Berger, for your information, one of the strongest positional player. He was the author of the books about the endgame, uh, and he was and his book was actually uh, the most informative book about the endgame. So, for example, the idea, basic idea of the square, where you can catch the the pawn, the free pawn with your king, uh, it belongs to Berger. So just for your information. So this was probably R. Berger, not Johann Berger, and it played in 1907 in Vienna. So this is, I believe, this is the truth. If you have a different information, I will try to ask some chess historians. Maybe they are gonna be interested to find more information. Uh, but but I believe this is this is true. And without further ado, let's see why this game could be called Immortal Game of Dr. Krejcik. However, I am not sure who called that immortal game, but let's see, because the game is indeed beautiful. Berger open with d4. Uh, we have d5, c4, queen's gambit, and now e5. So Albin's counter gambit, d takes on e5 and d4. And nowadays, uh, most of the players doesn't care about defending actually this pawn uh, too hard uh, and bringing the bishop there because there are some very dangerous traps on the queen side. So what nowadays is played to, to do safe is just, you know, uh, give back this pawn and continue development. So modern idea is actually knight f3, knight c6, uh, g3, knight g2, e7. So this is very, very solid approach. And then castle. So as you see, uh, black actually uh, are lack in development, getting only now getting back the, the material uh, and after exchanging uh, white already castle and also development is slightly better, still playable for black, but black have to be very, very careful in here. However, we have e4. Nowadays, some Sometimes, you know, top players also play this um, this E4 move. It's much sharper. So Daniel Dubov, for example, played in one of his games. Uh, and now the main idea here is also it sh you should know that if you ever played, uh, because you can be sometimes surprised that Knight C6 should be played. And then idea is that after f4 we play f6 and now uh, white actually are forced to exchange otherwise white gonna have these ugly pawns here and there are no tricks with the queen here too much okay uh, i will show you another line where where there are some tricks however in this case uh e takes on f6 knight f6 we have 10 games in the database six of them were won by black so black have very attractive continuation here just for your information if you ever play uh you know albi encounter gambit uh, but at that time bishop c5 was the quite natural moving the bishop to this deadly diagonal we have f4 of course and now f6 uh, and here e takes on f6 isn't um, forced actually in the analysis i just mentioned uh from 1908 from wiener schacht zeitung uh, that was like it's forced but actually it's not because now uh what can happen here is actually knight f3. White can continue with knight f3 and after knight c6 still just don't care about that. Don't help to develop this, this knight to f6. That would be, you know, in favor of black, but rather simply bishop d3 just, you know, block this pawn, which is very dangerous. If this diagonal is open, it can be very dangerous. Now you would ask, okay, but what if black now takes in the center? White gonna have this ugly pawns? Actually not, because after knight e5 and knight e5, 
now white have this move. Queen h5 now works as a charm because now if knight actually uh, retreat, then this bishop is hanging, okay? So with bishop c5, this is not so attractive for uh, for black. White have very nice advantage. The king is still in the center. White can very easily actually uh, castle, develop the pieces and have very comfortable game. But at that time, as I said, we have a e takes on f6, knight f6, uh, bishop d3, we have also knight c6, very natural move, a3 preparing uh, b4, uh, we have a5, we have also knight f3, we have castle, castle, uh, and now knight g4, this is the move which engine actually likes very much with the idea of maybe jumping to, to e3, uh, or maybe do something together with the bishop on the, on the f2. But of course, uh, this is the main obstacle, so it's not possible for now. So first we have rook e8. Uh, actually attacking the, the pawn twice and provoking to move uh, and here Berger actually pushed the pawn which is a pretty good move the best in the position now we have knight g4 uh, and here uh, it's a uh, one of the critical moments of the game because it's gonna show the character of the game what's gonna happen next the main idea here is actually king h1 moving from this diagonal, uh, which is very important. Also, what is possible, play something sharp. Uh, jump with the knight to g5 first, with the attack on h7, weaken the pawn structure and try to attack. But this is also very, very sharp. However, we have rook e1, which is not, um, you know, the worst move yet. Uh, white still stands better. However, now it starts to be very, very tricky. Bishop f5. This is what uh, Krejcik plays. Sacrifice the bishop. Now, uh, Lasker said, okay, the best idea to refute the, uh, the sacrifice is actually to accept that sacrifice. Now, would you take this, this bishop or not? It's a pretty tricky question because the engine actually suggests that, okay, queen e2, queen c2, uh, defend, support this bishop and uh, take maybe the bishop later, if it's still possible but for now better to not take now uh, what just happened in the game is Berger took it and now is the moment where you can pause the video and find the winning continuation for Krejcik okay winning continuation for black while I enjoy my cup of tea okay ready so there is only one move which is winning for black only one and this is one continuation the winning move because black is down the material whole piece uh, is actually d3 with check it doesn't look like the dangerous move because this pawn actually attacks nothing uh, but actually controls a very important square on e2 this is the key square so now the king cannot go to h1 because we of course gonna have a very beautiful royal fork this is why we have king f1 in the game and now look at this boom queen h4 queen h4 by krejcik and now the point is that we have a checkmate on f2 very very sneaky idea of course the queen cannot be taken because we also have the checkmate here look at this this bishop extremely dangerous and this pawn this little pawn on d3 also is extremely dangerous that would be the checkmate first beautiful idea what white could try and it would be very very tricky now is bishop h7 and now how tricky is that? For example, if black thinks, okay, I don't want to bring the, the queen to the, to the h7 because this is the checkmate threat. So I don't want to go back with the, with the queen. And if we have king h7, there is the huge problem here because now queen d3 with the check actually wins the queen. Look at this. The e2 square is now free to go okay so king g8 and now simply knight h4 and there is no checkmate because the king can escape okay so that's the first thing uh, queen h7 would have to be played uh, and then after h3 very simple move again queen h4 and again we have this checkmate so now uh if queen d2 then there is the tricky stuff is we want to actually lure the defender uh, of the h2 to deliver the checkmate that would be the checkmate so what we want to do is play knight c2 e5 uh, and then white gonna play uh for example a rook e5 rook e5 f takes on e5 and then black can actually bring another rook pin the knight 
and then deliver the checkmate and the king cannot move anywhere look at this all the squares around actually are controlled by the black pieces so nothing can be done here uh, h takes on g4 only but then we have another checkmate here okay because the knight is pinned so cannot move and block this this mate beautiful stuff beautiful stuff bishop h7 uh, was the chance but it's still you know losing for white this is why we have queen d2 immediately and now boom queen h2 sacrificing the queen of course the queen cannot be taken because uh because we have this checkmate on h2 so that's not possible this is why we have bishop d3 making a space the escaping path for the king uh but now we have queen h1 king e2 queen g2 a uh, king d1 queen f3 and now uh if the king moves of course to the to the c2 then black gonna have the problems with the knight d4 another piece joining the attack and uh, there is only one move now king c3 and then knight f2 wins the game and now whatever white plays is actually game over so for example queen e3 if you want to exchange the queens simplifies the position boom and you're gonna lose the queen because there is the check and discover attack on the queen so that's the first idea rook f1 if you want to actually win the knight there is the problem because this knight can actually deliver the checkmate this is another beautiful idea finally rook e3 looks also very solid but then we have knight d1 and now the king has nowhere to go there is only one move and this is queen d1 exchanging the queen uh, for the knight of course is a pretty bad idea so we already know that king c2 and letting this knight jumping to d4 is extremely dangerous this is why we had bishop e2 this is the berg what berger played and now it's time to pause the video one more time and find the first checkmate in three moves while i enjoy my cup of tea okay ready so there is of course only one idea first what we want to do is block this escaping path uh, for the king so what we play is queen b3 with check there is only one way look at this all of these pieces around and only the queen can actually block uh, but now we have knight f2 with check again and the pieces cannot help we have king d2 and bishop d3 ended um, the game so this is how Josef Krejcik delivered the checkmate. Very beautiful one. And if you like it, just, you know, press like. And uh, for some reason, if you don't like it, press unlike. And if you don't want to miss other spectacular games like this one on my channel, press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.